Alright, so in this video I'm going to be talking about how these angels, okay, these angels and the compass and how they equal the four corners of the earth and they, they equal north, east, south, and west and how this all actually just points right to Christ. God uses this stuff, this ancient stuff to point right to Christ, not because it's not real, because it is real, alright? I'm going to go over that right now. So I'm going to briefly go over the angels again okay <clears throat> so the cherub has the cherub starts having serpentine stuff into it too but i'm gonna just go over the basic version of this okay so the cherub consists of four heads for now okay it's a man a lion an eagle and an ox okay that's a cherub okay and there's also this spinning wheel uh, the Bible calls this Ezekiel's wills. Uh, according to the Dead Sea Scrolls, the name that Jews gave this thing is a, is an ophanum. All right. There's so many, so much um, meaning to what this, these things are. But I'm just doing a compass version of this right now. Okay. So there's these four living creatures, and there's a seraphim in there. Seraphims are serpentine. Okay. Um, most people will use the picture on the right for a seraphim. Okay, that uh, God uses the philosophy behind that. I already made a video about that, about just a big f a animal covering itself with feathers, okay, or covering its body parts with wings. I, I think God uses the philosophy behind that. I'm not saying if you've ever heard of that, you're, it's 100% wrong, okay, but there's multi-dimensional meanings to these passages, okay. There's multi-layered meanings. You're supposed to use different kinds of pictures for different kinds of philosophy. But I am telling you, seraphims don't look like this. If you want, if the seraphims don't look like this in the past, okay, uh, everyone had seraphims in the ancient world, not just the Jews, okay. Uh, and they were all they were all snakes with wings, okay. Everyone had cherubims and seraphims, not just the Jews. Please understand that. Okay, they are a mixture of these animals. Okay, seraphims are serpentine. They definitely are. Okay, but I, I, they, people will use the, this picture on the right as a seraphim. That's why you're going to see it. Okay. <clears throat> and also, there's a spinning wheel. All right. The, and these are, you know, kind of God uses these things. God uses these things for many things, but they, you know, people think that these are angels, okay? They use the, the scriptures for being angels. Alright, so this is so important. This concept is still to on today because it's real, okay? But this concept lasted for like 10,000 years in every ancient culture. In India, and in, with the Mayans, with Peru, uh, the Incas with the Jews, okay, with the Egyptians, ah, the Egyptians, I'm not so sure, but most ancient cultures, almost every single one, including the Native Americans, okay, they thought, be, why? Because everyone was copying each other and they, everyone comes from the same place, okay, but when you twist the words around, it become, becomes a devil. Anyway, they thought that there were four creatures, four living creatures, who held up the earth okay and they held to the earth together okay and this lasted all the way into the they even put this stuff on maps until like the 1800s okay all right and not only do these things held to get earth together okay these creatures held up you were usually depicted holding up a god or their king okay it's so funny because in the book of Genesis, it literally tells you that this is going to happen. It says four heads and a th holding up the throne, okay? It describes this in the book of Ezekiel as well. Anyway. <clears throat> anyway. So these creatures are usually holding up the earth, or they're holding the earth together, or they're holding up a king, okay, or a god. All right, I'm going to show you pictures of that right now so you know I'm not just making things up. All right, I'm going to bring up this one first because everyone's always going to miss this one. This one's really important. Okay, so the Ophanim is supposed to be some sort of angel or something, okay? But I'm telling you, it just directs 
this thing to Christ. It's all it does. But anyway, this thing they this thing represents so many different things, okay? But in translation, Ophanim means spinning wheel, but it also translates into whirlwind. Okay? That's what okay. So at the four corners of the earth there are whirlwinds. Okay, it's talking about this thing. Alright? So whenever you hear in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, it talks about these things being at the four corners of the earth. Okay? It's, uh, it talks about the, it's talking about, when it says whirlwinds, it's talking about this Ophronim. Okay? That in these ancient maps, these older maps, okay, they put angels, like men with wings, blowing out whirlwinds. Okay? Even, like, all these maps have, like, cherubs, like these Cherubims are not chubby little children, okay? You can thank pagans and the Catholic Church for making you think that angels are chubby little children. This is not what this is not what angels look like, okay? But when it says when you see on these maps cherubs or angels blowing wind, it's talking about the Ophanum. Because the Ophanum is the whirlwind. Whatever God says he is, the devil still doesn't says it's him, okay? And I'm gonna show you what I mean. Alright. All right, look at this picture. I believe this is an India or I don't know if this is Mayan or Indian. Sorry, I don't remember. Anyway, look at the bottom of this. These look at the seraphims, okay? Because seraphims are serpents, okay? Because seraphim means fiery, flying serpent, okay? Anyway, um, look at the bottom. What's at the bottom of them? Do you see those four creatures holding it up? Okay, that's one picture. I'm gonna keep going. Was that they're holding up the seraphims? All right. Same thing with this picture. Do you see those those people? I guess at the bottom of these cherubs. Okay. You see those people holding up their god and their kings and their cherubims. Okay. Do you see them at the bottom? See them holding up? This is obviously in India. All right. Now I'm gonna keep going. What about this? See at the bottom, the ox is holding him up. Is it an ox or a lion? Can't tell doesn't matter because it's still one of those four living creatures anyway see how the ox is holding up this god and this king right these are babylonian gods by the way <clears throat> um same thing here in this case this god this queen is being held up by the feline the lion or the tiger okay all right, so this is the same thing. It's just the diff a different one of the animals. Sometimes it's a human. Sometimes it's an eagle. Sometimes it's an ox. In this case, it's the lion. Okay, holding up the king or god. And it's so creepy because some of these guys are literally holding pitchforks. Okay, They're, these these gods come from the devil. It's not a coincidence. Okay, this, this is the same thing. This one's really important because do you see how it looks like a cross? Yeah, you, you, you understand? Do you get that? Anyway, there's four creatures in the shape of a T. Okay. God took all these concepts. He made Jesus die on a cross on purpose. So, because this cross thing was a big theme too. So, he made Jesus He was using their own concepts, people's own concepts. So, they come out of this deception and go into Christ. It's not a coincidence that these things look like a crosses. Okay. It's not because, oh, the, the the Jews and the Christians, they just like to rip off people. No, God was using their own concept so people come out of the devil. These these ancient people were all doing the same thing because it was the devil mocking God and Christ. Okay, it was the other way around. Anyway, so the, that's the, this is the exact same thing. There's are four heads holding up a god or a king, just like the Bible says. This is the mockery of it, though, right? And it's so funny because there's usually there's usually four, but sometimes there's just one. In this case, it's the same thing. Look at the bottom. There's serpents because cons seraphims are serpentine, okay? And there's an eagle and there's a bull or ox, okay? Holding up a god or a king, just like the Bible says, all right? All right, this was uh, in Germany. I already talked about this in my Christmas video, okay? Uh, proto germany before this area was called germany uh, you know they, they had the exact same creek i uh, had they have exact same concept there was f in this case it was four elves okay and you read it if you read the information the four elves are supposed to be north east south and west okay exact same stories there's f four living creatures holding the earth together or up
Oh, look, the Egyptians are doing the same thing. See how the lions are holding up the throne of a queen or king, okay? Same exact concepts over and over again. Because all of these things are a mockery of heaven and God and the Garden of Eden, okay? Alright, in Christ. This one, this one's interesting because it's the Ophanim holding up a god or king or, or a cherubim, okay? It's the, oh, it's the spinning wheel holding it up. Same thing with the Roman and Greek gods, okay? They have the exact same thing. There's lions at his feet, okay? Same thing. Everyone does the same exact thing. Okay, so, and this pattern of, you know, sitting on lions or standing on lions and tigers or, or an ophanum or a ox or a bull kept going, especially with the lions, okay? Uh, obviously in Europe, you can just look at the throne. You ever wonder why there's... I already did a video where I talk about why, about why they have open mouths. Okay, but I'm, I'm talking about a different concept in this one. See, there's still... This concept just kept going and going and going. And all people started doing... Well, people don't even sit on thrones anymore. All people started doing all over the world is they started putting these things on flags. They, crests, okay? There was, there were, they became thrones, and then the thrones became crests. Okay, they started putting these things all over crests, and then they just started putting all, every, all of it on flags. Okay, it's, they put the animals over the cherub, the exact same four animals usually, sometimes there's more, okay, on top, uh, on a flag, and that became the new, it's not even new, because everyone just keeps doing the exact same thing. Okay, they start putting on flags. That's it, that's all they did, they put, they put the cherubs on their flags, that's it. Instead of sitting, just sitting on them, okay? See, look at all these flags. There's like serpents and eagles, and and and, and there's two. I'm, I'll, I'll talk about cherubs are throne guardians, okay? They're 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 gatekeepers. That's why there's usually two of them next to a, the middle part is a, a crest, but it's also a it's also the ophanum, okay? It's also this opening. Okay, this, because the Ophanum is also, it's supposed to represent a portal or a gateway or a doorway. I'll talk about that later. And it's so funny because two cherubs are, they, they represent a kingdom. Okay, and that's, that's still what they do. These, these flags represent a nation or a kingdom, so these cherubs represent a nation or a kingdom. But it's usually the same four animals. Alright, okay, but... They, these things on flags are cherubs, okay? And it's very important. Cherub, the word cherub means mi to mix together, okay? That root word behind cherub, it means mixture. And that's exactly what's going on with all these gods. They're a mixture of all these animals, okay? Now I'm going to talk about, I know I already talked about this stuff in my previous videos, but it's just too important. Now I'm going to tie all these animals to the cross. And you're put, and the cross becomes a compass, and that's why in the Book of Psalms it literally tells you that he says, well, "The bulls of Bashan compass me." Compass means surround, like or, or surround, but also mean he also meant literally like a literal compass, like north, east, south, and west. Okay, these animals are supposed to equal four corners of the earth, north, east, south, and west. Anyway, what you're supposed to be doing. Is you're supposed to, not supposed to connecting a lot of dots, okay? When it says there's four living creatures, the ox, the ox, the eagle, the man, and, and the lion, you're supposed to connect these four animals to the cross, okay? And the cross is a compass, all right? It's a north, east, south, and west, all right? You're supposed to connect these four animals to the cross. All right, and that's why Christ is known as the anointed cherub because it compares these animals to Christ. Okay, the devil's known as the roaring lion, so God calls Jesus the Lion of Judah. All right, uh, <clears throat> on the Ark of the Covenant, there are horns. Okay, that's supposed to link you to the ox. Okay, and horns are also crowns. All right, obviously, Jesus has a crown that's connecting you to the horns, and I, and, I, and I, I already talk about over and over again in the book of Psalms it says you know under the wings of the the eagle okay but it's talking about under the wings of the cross it links the eagle to the cross it links all these animals to Jesus on the cross okay is my point and this is why it calls 
Christ, the anointed cherub, and why it calls Satan the anointed cherub. Because Jesus is linked to all these animals, and so is the devil. Okay. <clears throat> and my point, the point is, God's like, watch. All these animals are going to be all, on, all over the four corners of the earth. And then they were. Okay, because we put them on flags and stuff. All right. Including the seraphim, which is serpent, serpentine. All right. That's why there's snakes all over crosses. Uh, over flags, I'm sorry. Anyway, the point is, um, you have to let, you can either be, you can use, you, you can either work for the kingdom of Christ, which is everywhere. It's all, the kingdom of Christ, when he died on the cross, okay, he, you're, the kingdom extends outside of Jerusalem, obviously. It's not just in Jerusalem anymore, right? And when he died on the cross, he died for everyone, all right, and his, his kingdom extended all over to the four corners of the earth. North, east, south, and west. That's why he's can Okay. You can either work for this anointed cherub, or you can work for the other guy. Okay. You can either make your, your life for the kingdom of Christ, or you can live for your country. Just like your literal, literal country or your own sin. Okay. And that, that's, that, that, that's the comparison here. Alright. You are supposed to be making the kingdom of your and the reason it also connects you to you being these animals. You are the being. It connects. God calls us these animals in the Bible. Okay, He says He's going to give us the horns of the ass. He's going to give us, uh, you know, He's going to give us His chair, His body, so you can spread the kingdom of God to the four corners of the earth. Okay. You're supposed to be helping God expand his kingdom to everyone else all over the earth. Okay, if you're not doing that, you're automatically doing the other version. You're automatically spreading the devil's cherubims all over the earth. Okay, just like I just showed you in the, pre in the beginning of this video. Alright, because that, if you're, even if you're an atheist, you are automatically doing the, doing the devil's work. Alright, so please choose Christ. You're supposed to be doing this. Okay, you're not supposed to be... If you can literally choose any of the other versions, you can choose any other god, the devil... You can even choose a combination of gods. You can you can pick seven different gods. As long as it's not Jesus, it, the devil doesn't care, okay? It has to be only Jesus, or you're, you will automatically be choosing something out, the other guy, okay? Th this is the only way. We're the people are the one that connects us to these animals and the bodies of these animals because we're the ones who are supposed to be holding up our God so everyone else can see, okay? Everyone else is doing it for their own God. You're supposed to be doing this for Christ. Hold him up. Go into the four corners of the earth and hold him up so everyone else can see. That's why it links all these animals to us too. That's why he says he gives us these body parts, all right? And this is why we started putting crosses on all of our flags instead of just the cherubs, okay? Because the cross is the is the north, east, south, and west. The cross is the four corners of the earth, okay? And this is also the devil mocking the cross. He's like, fine, I'm going to use a cross too. I'm going to use a twisted upside down cross, okay? That's why these crosses are like distorted and not exactly perfect crosses all the time. All right, but there's as, this is a this is antichrist stuff. Okay, this is a devil pretending he's Christ by putting crosses on things when it's him. All right, this is a devil mocking the cross because obviously these kingdoms don't represent Christ as a whole. All right, they're obviously good people inside these kingdoms. There's good people. There's the body of Christ is inside these kingdoms, but the kingdom as a whole. Is a big one unclean animal, okay? That's why beasts are king. If you connect all the dots in the Bible, beasts are kingdoms and animals are beasts, right? This and if you and you, if you have a bunch of dirty people and clean people, it becomes a speckled and spotted unclean animal. These kingdoms are all big one unclean at beasts, okay? And they're the clean parts in them are the body of Christ. There are obviously people inside all these kingdoms that work for Christ. But the kingdom as a whole is a big one unclean animal. Alright? It's a speckled and spotted animal. Anyway. And also, this is very, very deep messaging. Okay. You know, they thought these animals were holding the world up. Or they're holding the earth together. 
and God links these animals to Christ because God is saying this God, this God is holding this earth together. Okay, it's not un- some other God or some other weird animals. Okay, <laughs> this is the this is the the entity that's holding the fabric of time on earth together and the dimensions together. I'm not kidding. Okay, okay. That's what hell is. Hell is the absence of Christ and God, and it's not held together. It's chaos. Okay, all right. The dimensions are all messed up down there. Everything's crazy. Okay, this is the guy who's holding up the earth and the earth together. All right, it's nothing else. The devil is doing the exact opposite. He's trying to make chaos and tear it all apart. And also, this all relates to the Ark of the Covenant, okay? The, if the wheels at the corners of the earth is talking about God being all over the earth. The Ark of the Covenant is all over the earth. It's not like an actual box somewhere anymore, okay? That's why he, God made the Ark of the Covenant disappear because it's everywhere. The kingdom of God is everywhere. God is everywhere. The, the Ark of the Covenant, the box, is supposed to represent the four corners of the earth. And the wheels turn into the chariot, okay? The, putting the oaf at the bottom of the, at the corners of the earth, it, it, it turns the, it, it turns into the chariot of God, alright? And that's very important. The Ark of Covenant is also a big map of the earth, alright? And God is saying, God isn't in one, isn't in Jerusalem anymore. He's everywhere now, alright? That's, that's the, the philosophy behind that. Please think about this. All right. All right. Thank you.